Welcome to the Hermitus Podcast with Andrea Cox, the only plant-based astrology podcast focusing on hermetic principles, cellular detoxification, and mystery teachings. Andrea's interviews include her celebrity clients, NBA ball players, musical composers, detoxification specialists, and world-renowned healers just like Andrea. Andrea is a model-turned-celebrity detox specialist, intuitive healer, and holistic wellness and life coach. You will find only authentic people interviewed on this podcast. Real recognizes real. Andrea prides herself on only inviting those who are uniquely creative. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hermetis Podcast Show. Today, we have Charles Chen. Charles Chen is the creator of 888 Process, a wellness community focused around daily micro habits for transformation, eight minutes for your mind, body, and soul. Yoga and Holistic Chef, featured on Good Morning America, Dr. Oz, TLC, Netflix. Charles had a 100 pound weight loss transformation and is now passionate about supporting others on their wellness journey. So I already uh, introduced you. I read your uh, intro, excuse the wet hair. So Charles, (laughs) I am, so for those of you tuning in, I have been wanting to get Charles on the show more than anyone else. I am Charles. I'm his stalker. I am his, I stalk him on social media. Oh my God. His workout videos. I'm okay. Charles is at the gym. I have to go to the gym. Like Charles keeps me in shape. Charles makes sure I don't, you know, dive off the deep end when I eat. I love, I'm really nerdy. And then my dog just knocked over. Sorry about that. I am your biggest. Fan. So how did you get into health and wellness? Uh, honestly, on accident. A lot of people ask me, excuse my voice, every time after I do, I do hot yoga, by the way. So I just came from hot yoga. Nice. And my voice always seems to like go away. But I got into health and wellness through kind of my weight loss journey. I, at one point, weighed 100 pounds heavier. I was numbing myself with food. And I think that many people have different types of ways that they numb out. I wasn't ready to process my own emotions and deal with all the trauma work. So the easy way out was just to numb. And so I found quickly found fast food. I was born in the US and then raised in Taiwan with my family until age seven. And my parents had a divorce. We moved back to America And I was a skinny little kid, but then I was dealing with all these emotions that I didn't know how to process and food was my easy way out of numbing. So I got addicted to junk food and um, that's when all the weight started to pile up, really hit my rock bottom at a very early age. And I'm very grateful for that now. And I'm sure you have similar experiences, but rock bottoms are a catalyst for transformation. Anybody who's at a rock bottom or experiencing some lows in their life, just know that you can only go up from there. And you can either face the truth or continue to deny and to numb out. And so I hit my rock bottom. I was like, there's got to be a better way. And then I think when you're broken open, it allows the divine to come through. It allows something bigger than ourselves to come through. So I was definitely on my on my knees moment. And I think those are very humbling and beautiful moments because it allows something bigger than ourselves to tap in. And I had a voice that came through and it was like, you know, if you change your life, you can change, you can help other people change their lives. And I was like, okay. And I started quickly going to the farmer's market, started studying about health because there was so much misinformation, you know, we're bombarded with all these advertisements. And I was like, I want the truth. I want to know what's working. I want more energy. And then that's kind of how I started getting into like raw foods, mono meals, Mm -hmm. detoxification, Mm -hmm. uh, learning about meditation, breath work, yoga, finding tools to help me work with the different emotions and then go do some shadow work, inner child healing. So it's just been like a very holistic journey, but food was definitely my way back to healing my body and finding more energy. 
Yeah. And you're young, right? You're in your 30s? Yeah, I'm 35 now. <laughs> you're you're so young. Uh yeah. So so you're 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 a baby. I remember when I was 35. Long many, oh, stop. <laughs> many decades ago. So so you're 35 and you started this journey when? When was was the rock bottom moment? How old were you? The rock bottom was like age 15, 16. <laughs> so did that early on. But then it's one thing to lose the weight. And a lot of times people lose the weight and then they gain it right back. So right. it was really about tapping back into the subconscious belief systems. Even now, like, you know, you talked about fitness, Andrea, all these different tools are for me. Um, it helps give me an outside perspective. Like when I'm working out, I get into the zone. When I'm practicing yoga, it takes me somewhere where I can become the observer of my reality. I can start becoming very mindful of the habits that I continue to perpetuate, either it's serving me or not serving me. So I always talk about every action that we are taking, it's either increasing more love, more light, or it's creating more shame, more guilt. So it's like, it's either based out of love or fear. So after I lost all the weight, you know, there have been many moments where it's like I would go back to my old habits. So I had to really like go back to the drawing board and like weed out all the things that didn't serve me, the thought patterns, the belief systems, really look at them. Do I find them to be true? Are they true? And if I want to empower myself, what are more empowering stories I can tell myself rather mm -hmm. than create the same habits, the same results. So every chapter of our lives, I feel like requires a different version of myself. We're just continue to shed layers and then we're stepping into the truth of who we are. So I think it's so important for anybody who is listening to find your own practice, find your own process, whatever that is, something that you can show up every single day, regardless of how you feel. But then it's hot practice. yoga, right? One of your practices is hot yoga. Yeah, one of them is hot yoga. I also love swimming. I mm. think people can find their own. Like it could be walking your dog, making tea, making juice, gardening. It doesn't have to be anything that's too, you know, like hard on the body. Like honor your body. But I just, you know what works best for you as long as it's coming from a place of compassion rather than judgment. Because I think... I've seen even in the fitness world, you can see people go to the gym for the wrong reasons. It's like they're beating themselves up. And I'm like, no. So whenever I find myself in that, I have to bring more compassion and be like, no, 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 no. I love my body and my body is telling me this is what I need today. I'm going to honor it and let go of the judgment, let go of like comparison with, you know, other people with social media. It's very, you know, it's very natural for people to compare their lives to someone's highlight reel. So really to cultivate, I like the, the idea of like cultivating space to connect with the divine each day, whether it's like going out in nature before you look on your phone, emails, creating that relationship with the divine, rooting yourself, getting some sun, making juice, connecting with the elements it kind of grounds you. Yeah, there was a, a time when I lived in Encinitas, California and San Diego, where I did hot yoga twice a day for 365 days. It was, um, I think I was around, oh, I don't want to give away my age, but I think it was around 42 or something like that. I was really, really into it. And now here, not being able to find a hot yoga studio, but having my sauna here, sleeping next to a Rife machine, having gym equipment in my home, but also having a gym real, like a stone throw away. I was telling my assistant before we did this, she's like, do you want to check out this other way we can report, record the podcast when we're done? I said, I have not been out of the house in five days and I'm going to break if I don't get out of the house right after the, and I think for me, I'm like you, like, I love the feeling of going to the gym, of drinking my green juice. That's something I really don't stray from. But if I can't get to the gym for four or five days, first of all, it doesn't fall apart. 
And second, and at my age, that's really good. And second of all, it's okay. Like I'm forgiving now. I also had a rock bottom moment. I had bulimia. So I just remember being in a fitness model and standing over a toilet bowl and being on the cover of a magazine and just not loving myself and thinking right then, I'm never going to do this again. Like I, this is the last time. And so that's what, where living foods came in for me. I know that you combine a lot of traditional foods, Charles, because I, again, I stalk you. I love that you combine a lot of like your traditional foods that look so delicious, like these soups and things of that nature. Can you tell us about, when did that come in? Because I know the way you eat has shifted over the years because I followed your journey. Can you share with us about that? Yeah, I, you know, when I first got onto the raw food side, it was really good. Even like I started listening to the rhythms of the seasons, right? And I remember having just really good people around me. And I, I'm, a, I'm an observer. Ever since I was a little kid, I would just watch. I'd be very observant. And I started seeing like certain people who had certain dogmas like they stuck to certain dogmas, but then they weren't really healthy, right? So then I was like, I, I'm, I'm a Libra, all about the balance. I'm always trying to find, okay, that's a little too much pulled back. Um, so different seasons, I want different things. Like my, um, my body might want something that's a little bit more warm. So going back each year, I would go back to Asia and I was a nerd about, you know, adaptogens, uh, about traditional Chinese medicine. I went to the herbalist. I just anything holistic I wanted to learn. I was like, well, tell me more. And I did grow up on bone broths, like bone broths before it was like a trend, like in the US. It was like served with every meal, almost We're like chronic yeah. digestion, the gut flora yeah. to prepare ourselves. Yeah. And there would be goji berries in there. It would be like ginseng and all these different herbs. So my mom actually opened a bunch of um, herbalist stores in Asia. So then I started going to the herbalist, like teach me everything. Like I want to know what do I do to protect my chi? And if it's, if your body's too cooling, what do you need? They call it, if it's too damp or if it's too dry, it's more heat, you need to cool it down. So I started learning that, oh, wow, you can't, there's not one way to eat for every specific body type. And then different different seasons in your life. If a woman is about to give birth, there's different types of foods you do to replenish, to protect, to keep the womb warm, right? So I started learning about that and then started getting into different herbs. Um, you know, there's like maca, shizandra, and talking to different herbalists. And there's an herbalist that I love. His name is Remy, Remnia. Mm -hmm. And he's in the, he was in the raw food world. He was like back in the days, at the Erwan, you know, um, bar, the tonic bar, he worked with dragon herbs. So he's become a really good friend. And he's like, he looks so healthy. Every time he comes to LA, we'll it's go not grab food. Truth. It's not Truth Calkins, it's someone else. He actually worked with Truth Calkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so, is my like, that's yeah. 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 So they're friends. He would know Remya. And he was speaking at the, I think it was like the, Conscious Living Expo. I went to go see him, support him. And um, he has a whole book about, it's called, I think it's called Raw Chi. And it's oh. about raw foods and incorporating traditional Chinese medicine and herbs. So yeah. I love that approach. Yeah. And even, I feel like there's another person you might know, Dara Dubonet. I love Dara. Uh -huh. I love She's Dara. The reason so, I started my YouTube channel. So yeah. I just saw her. That's why I asked you where you are because I'm close to Sedona, a few hours away. Okay, so this is so weird. I not weird, synchronistic. It's yelling I, at me to move off my Saturn line. She's like, How long have you been there? Two years? You've got to go. You've got to go now. She's like, You've got to move off the Saturn line. I'm on the Saturn on the MC. It's the worst. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, she, she, okay. She, no, no, no. So it was so funny because I my dad came to visit. And we like to take my dad and my mom on different trips. And then we're like, okay, we, let's take dad to Sedona. So we went to Are Sedona. Are you in Arizona? 
I was no no no. I'm I'm in LA right now, but then we okay. took my dad to Sedona. Okay. And then um I was like, ah, oh, I haven't talked to Dara in a while. Let me reach out. But I reach out to her. She's like, I'm in I'm I'm in Arizona. Like, I'm gonna come visit you. And then we met up at the chocolate tree. She's the sweetest. And then we, we, she did a whole reading. Like she was like, This this is your ask her photography. Yes, yes, because I've been feeling called to move and I am taking some of her advice. I I love LA. It's good for work, but like it's just not not to be here all the time because it's like I'm always like shielding and protecting and uh cocooning my energy. What line but, are you on? Uh, I'm not That's sure. Where? I, I wrote a book on astrology. It's called Eat Right for Your Zodiac. I'm really into Vedic. Please astrology. tell me. Tell me everything. You don't know what line you're on? Right I now? don't. What line you're living on? Okay. Well, I, I, I have this thing. I'll, I'll send you my chart because I'm like still learning. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. I just been feeling called. Like I literally gave myself a deadline. I was like, okay, I think end of, end of September, I am because I'm traveling, but then I'm thinking about giving up my place so then I can travel. I'm going to Thailand, India. And then Dara told me Australia is really good for me. So Brisbane is like my best. I'm like, it's like my Jupiter and Venus collide and there's like magic. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So I'm going to visit first just to see my whole thing is like, can I thrive and can I work there? Because, you know, Asia is great. I can speak the language, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if like I'll be able to like thrive there, you know? So mm, yeah. Yeah. The lines are important. And now that I've moved to literally what's known to living on the worst line that like just brings everything to a halt and causes, I do know that there was a purpose for it. Living on your Saturn line gets you where you want to be right after you move off of it. Mm. Um, but it's, it's a lot of trials, tribulations, lawsuits. I had my first ever lawsuit here, which I, I inflicted on someone, else. but, um, yeah, so it's, I, I spoke to her on one of her lives the other day on Instagram and I said, it's surviving the Saturn on MC. And she goes, Oh, move. You're, you just got to move. She's like, there's no, there's no surviving it. She's like, I'm surprised you look you don't look like a hundred years old because it ages. So it ages you so quick to live on it. And I've been here two years. I have family here. So that's why. Um, but yeah, it's time. Uh, so I wanted to ask you are, okay. You, you live in LA. How did it all happen? You know, the fame that everything just happened for you. When did that happen? And how did that happen? Because you like just you blew up basically. Honestly, what? How did it? When did it start? I I still think I'm like I'm still going, but um, everything happened very organically. I just remember after the decision when I heard the inner voice of like, okay, um, if you can transform your life, you can help as many people as you can. That's kind of my north star that I've always come back to is service. Like whatever I touch, media, podcast, whatever I do, it's like, how can I become and be of service to other people, right? And to build a platform. So when I first started my journey, I started a blog very early on documenting the foods that I was consuming, inspiration. Um, And then that blog quickly grew and I did my first TV interview. A producer reached out and was like, hey, found your blog. We love to interview you. I was at, still in college at the time. I had no idea that I can turn this into, you know, like a business or something that I can make a living off of. And so I did the interview. And then quickly after Whole Foods Market, before the Amazon acquisition, they reached out because they were focused on community events. They're like, hey, would you like to share some recipes? And I had at that point, I was like, I was just behind a computer sharing my my recipes. I was like, what? Um, sure. You know, like when you get those like opportunities and you're so scared to say yeah. yes, but then my quick instinct was like, yes. Yeah. Like that's the only way that you're gonna grow is to throw yourself into it. So I said quickly, I said yes. And I think like 15 people showed up to that first uh meetup. 
but it was so thrilling. I remember going home and I was like, that was so much fun. Like, wow, like people can actually benefit from the recipes and I can help other people and I can share inspiration. And I just kept doing it. And I went on a tour with Whole Foods and then just kept showing up. You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of paying your dues and like I wasn't getting paid much, but I was like, I was just doing it because I loved it. And then the the community continued to grow and inspire me. And then I decided to move to New York. Mm. I New York, I had just gone out of a relationship, breakup. And I was like, you know, I, like I need change. I need to. I feel like that line's good for you. What line is New York for you? Dara told me that New York is really good for me. And I, I feel like it was. And when I was there, work was so good. Like work is. I'm very intuitive. I feel like that's a very good line for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been feeling called. I was like, okay, I need to do some more stuff in New York. So I'll plant the seeds. But it was really good. It's something weird. New York is so chaotic and so much is happening all at once. But I feel tapped in the most. Yeah. I feel connected to source. I can hear my guides and intuition is on point. I know who to connect with. And it's just like things happen. But I remember first going to New York to visit and I went to Chelsea Market and I was like, oh, I think this is where they film Food Network. I think this is where they food film Chopped. And I set the intention. I'm a big manifester. That's my human design. And I create vision boards on my laptop. A manifesting my, generator? A manifester. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I I set out an intention. I was like, okay, I'm going to move to New York. I'm going to get on Food Network. I don't know how. I'm going to do it. So I moved there and I started doing all these catering events and um, Whole Foods, cooking classes. And of course, I got a call from like a producer who was casting for Food Network. And then I auditioned, got on to Chopped. And that was whole, like, that was like a whole whirlwind. Like right after that, everything started to speed up. The management that I was trying to get signed to for the longest time that was ignoring me, like reached out, was like, you're ready now. And I'm like, oh God, like, <laughs> this is funny. You know, like when you, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Don't, don't chase, attract. Yeah, right. You start building the momentum. People will, they will come to you. That's still my motto now. Like I have no representation now. So you're a lot like me because I, I was in Dayton, Ohio, and I wrote this little rawlicious recipes book. And then it was, what was that company David Wolf owned? I forget. They invited yeah. me out. Yeah. Uh, Sun Food or Sun Food invited me out to like, literally hand out chocolates at an event. That's how little I was. But for some reason, I got on the news in Ohio and came out on the front cover of the Dayton Daily News. And it said um, something like raw, raw food leads to beauty or something because there's a model. So that's what. And then I got a phone call from a woman. She said, my husband is a Tony Award winning playwright and we would like to move you to California to make his food for six months. He's putting on a play at the old globe theater and it happened to be um steven sater and burt bachrach they were putting on a play and that was just it and then i got on the news in san diego and then i got a childhood star actor off brady bunch and then it was like and then people were asking me to come on their podcast never once did i go after anyone else for media and it sounds like that yeah it, i feel like that's like like people are really chasing media now. Like you see all the advertising. Uh, it's too much. And people ask me and I'm like, I will tell you, I've never hired a publicist in my life. Ever. And a lot of people, because a lot of people come to you and they're like, I was like, no, like I, I just, it was my intuition that guided me. It wasn't, it was spirit guiding me. It wasn't like, I wasn't chasing it. It was just like one little thing connected to the other, but I just was so focused and I tell this to like young people I meet all the time is like, you give your all to everything you do, like even if nobody is watching, because you want to create the habit of giving it your all when nobody is watching. Because a lot of times people do it when the spotlight is on them. When I got on Dr. Oz, by the way, it's like I had already envisioned and visualized how it felt to be on that. 
And all those whole food events that I was doing live was preparation for the actual taping because I got one shot and everything was scripted. I needed to know my cues and I was like thrown in. But because I had like visualized, meditated, and by the time I got there, he like pulled me aside. He was like, Charles, just have fun. And I was like, and then I reminded myself, I was like, yes, have fun. And then just be of service. One of the prayers I do before I get on stage or do anything is use me, use me wisely. Who will you have me meet? What will you have me say? And how can I best be of service? And that comes from A Course in Miracles and Marianne Williamson. Anytime I get nervous and people always ask me, do you get nervous? I was like, no, because if you're nervous, you're only thinking about yourself. It's not about me. We're just vessels for something that is greater. And if you can pull on to that, something greater is pulling you, giving you the energy. You're almost like channeling. You're not even thinking about what am I saying? What am I doing? You're so fully immersed in it. And then people can feel it. And then sometimes I'm just like, whoa, what was that? Like, where did I go? I just want to hug you right now. I just love your energy. You are so genuine. Libras are one of my favorite signs. I'm a Libra in Vedic, but a Pisces in Western. And Libras are one of my favorite signs because not only are they, I mean, Libra's the beauty, they're the, the, the two scales, the karmic justice, but they're seen by the divine as justice. So I have another question for you, and it's an energy question. It might be a little dark, but I have a yeah. sport moon, so you have to let me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So being a Libra and being so full of light and so balanced, there's always someone that wants to knock you off your pedestal. And I want to know how you have handled that along your journey, because I'm certain it's happened to you. No. It's so interesting because I was actually thinking about this early on because my mom, my mom is like my huge inspiration. Like ever since I was little, very supportive and very much like do what aligns with your heart. You don't need to do what the outside, what people are telling you what you need to do. I support you and I've raised you well. And she had kind of cultivated this level of like self-awareness. Anytime I would do something, she'd be like, go to the altar and then meditate. And then you tell me what you did. You mm -hmm. communicate to me what happened there. What were you feeling? So she kind of cultivated that. But like, I just remember growing up that she was so protective. And like her, my sister, my sister's an Aries, older. There's always so protective because I, they were like, you're so naive and you're too pure. Like, I need to protect you, right? And it wasn't until, you know, um, yeah, like moving to New York and I had a actual, I had a teacher last year that just moved back to the UK. She was my hot yoga teacher. She was a 77 year old woman. Her name was Francesca. She was fierce. She was fiery. And every time we'd go to her class, I would be at the back, back of the room because I didn't want to take up too much space. And towards the end, her last class, she like pulled me aside. She's like, Charles, go to the front. Your light will trigger a lot of unhealed people because that's just who you are. You're not trying to irritate anybody, but that's just who you are. You need to own it. And people will get pissed off. People will hate you, but continue to shine your light and do the work. Mm -hmm. And she's like, because you know your intentions are pure, right? She's like, take up space. And that's, that's a chapter that I've been working on is like learning to take up space, not to dim my light, being strong in my discernment boundaries. I'm like, no, this is my truth. And, you know, I'm sorry if you feel that way, but this is my truth and like owning it. So that was part of healing the sacral chakra, the throat chakra, mm -hmm. learning to like be in my power. Mm -hmm. So like she has been a catalyst, but yeah, you have to navigate all the the jealousy. I, I still deal with it all the time, but I think what I mentioned to you, learning to shield, I'm oh, yeah. not shielding and not letting the environment shift my energy. I go into spaces and I just blast them with light and love. And mm. even if they can't perceive it, if it's too overwhelming, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. I just go towards what is reciprocal, what is giving me energy rather than trying to please get someone's validations. Like, no, I don't need to waste my energy on that. But just being in, being aware of it. I'm very aware of it now, but then I also choose where I expand my energy 
and then where I can like just like maneuver. So you've never had anything major happen where you're like, oh great, like why is this like you've never had oh for sure I have. Yeah. And you you brought up lawsuit. I started I started a consulting business and during COVID, we launched these boxes and they did like really, really well mm -hmm. and got into a trademark lawsuit thing that I've never dealt with. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But that was also, it was also very beautiful because it taught me more about um, trademark stuff, but then also that like a, a company that was only like eight months old compared to a company that was like five years old. It's like, wow, like I really threatened someone because they thought like, and we were actually doing something right. So I just turned it around. I was like, you know what? Like I'm not taking it personally. And obviously this person has something that they're going through that like, I just send you love and moving on. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't stay in it. Yeah. 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 I, go ahead. Go ahead. I know. Cause I could, I easily could have fought it. And I had a lawyer, you know, was like, you know, this is not fair. And I just like sat with it. I was also in Sedona at the time. And I was like, you know what? The energy it takes to fight something, I can channel that energy into creating and building something new. I'm not attached to this name. Take it. I'm good. And that's the spurt of 80 day process. 80 day wouldn't have came if that old company. So like, I always think that there's a reason for everything. So like, and it's getting way more traction than the older company. So like, I'm actually grateful. And I sat in meditation in Sedona, I like asked my guide, I was like, I have 48 hours to change a name for a new company. And I need to swipe out everything, swipe out everything that I've built in the past, almost like a Tibetan mandala, like it never existed. But that was my, that was my practice of like non-attachment. I'm not attached to the form. I can yeah. move on. Yeah, I went through, and I don't want to put any energy into this, but I went through literally a group of people trying to deplatform my social media for over eight years, but really bad the last two years, like literally a hundred flags and reports on Facebook alone every day. And I, you know, got into the hiring and forensics expert, had my stuff subpoenaed, and I finally, finally filed a cease and desist. And what I came to, the conclusion I came to is, okay, what is the worst case scenario that could happen? Okay, I lose everything and I have to start from scratch. And I thought to myself, I have beautiful dogs. I have my health. I have a beautiful family. I look 15 years younger than I am. Like, what is like, who cares? You know, yeah. and I started channeling it into creativity yeah. and actually coming out with a new book and a Ted talk on it. And I feel like that's like, it's kind of like owl spirit, like channeling, like the owl does like channeling, you know, pain into your purpose is so incredibly powerful. And there was so many beneficial things from, from this happening. Like I, could not stand tech. And now I'm like a tech wizard. Like my assistant became a technical, she got another job, like helping people fix tech problems because she learned so much. And like, and I also learned to, when it happens to not sit at home all day, fixing it, but actually to go out, go to the gym, you know, channel it into self-care. Yeah. And so it was really I think from being a Pisces, from a heart-centered space, it was so hard for me to understand like, wow, people really hate me that much. Like, no. I must be really powerful if people hate me that much. And so yeah. that was, it was healing. And the last two years, again, Saturn line will do that. It'll bring awareness to why things happened. And so I have like a keen insight to it all now. I want to ask you this. Uh, do you want children? Do you want a family? Do you want to get married? Are you married? I don't think you are married. Not married. Um, I don't have kids. I love kids. I honestly don't know if it's in my, I, yeah. I you know, I've always been very clear and I talked to my mom about this and I was like, I don't think like that's my path. Like, even though like, like my sister loves kids 
and I know she's going to have kids and I know I'm going to be a great uncle, but I just feel like, you know, like when you, cause ever since I was little, I would like tell my mom, like, I'm here for a reason. Like I, like, I need to get to work. Like going and- on the food network, Charles was the week <laughs> announcing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I would just tell her, but I feel like there's just like, I don't know. I, and I think I, I feel that even till this age, I was like, you know, like all my friends are getting married. They're having kids. I'm just like, it's not, that's not my path. Like, I just know yeah. that I'm here for something else. I I get I'm dedicated to, to yeah, my Dharma. I'm dedicated as a service. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't never say never, but like, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it. Like I love kids. I'm really good with kids. Um, and I think they're just a great reminder of like the purification, like the playfulness, the joy, like, and they're the greatest teachers too. And like, if you study a lot of like Eastern philosophy, which I do, it's like a lot of it is also karmic. It's like, if you want to, you know, like, I just don't know, like, that's not my karma to bring kids. Like, it's not, no, like I'm here to just do the work and then yeah. yeah. And they, they also get our ancestral karma as well. And, and so we have to be really mindful if we are going to have kids on how we treat others, because if we don't clear that karmic path, they inherited, I did a lot of work clearing out my parents' ancestral karma. I have another question because everybody's going to want to know this, your routine and what, like, what are your three favorite dishes in your routine? Dishes, dishes in my routine, like food, food. Well, your routine, like your morning routine, and then how do you spend your weekends? And then your three favorite dishes we want to know. Okay, so favorite routine is probably prayer. Prayer, first thing in the morning. So gratitude, I do something where it's like right when I open my eyes, I am thinking of things that I'm grateful for. Like, oh, I'm so grateful to have this breath, to wake up in this beautiful bed and to have access to resources. And then I just thank my guides, my angels. And then yoga obviously is something, working out is fun, but it's also a lot of energy. I'm very sensitive. Like, so if I walk into a room, I have to shield because I start picking up on people. Even if I'm like, in yoga and shavasana, like I can feel everything that the person next to me is feeling. So I've learned. Is. I wonder what your north node. I've is. learned to shield it, and like some healers are like, "That's your gift," and I was like, "I know," but it's like sometimes it's so overwhelming. It's like I learn to turn it on and turn it off. Like I'm not doing this right now, and then if I'm if the person's open and receptive, then I will give things that come through. But it's like. No, like most of them, like I have to keep it because it's a lot, you know, and it's like, sometimes, like it's too much information. It's like, I don't want to know this right now. But um, so yoga helps me get grounded into the body because I'm an air sign. So I'm up here. So it helps me ground and just getting some sort of sun. Sun, mm-hmm. sun is good. Weekends, I enjoy playing pickleball. Like I swim, I swam this morning. I'm on a swim team. So I swam with my team, um, did yoga. Uh, my neighbor, she's so cute. She's like this uh, retired doctor, eye doctor. So she drops off like fruits and vegetables. She goes to the farmer's market. And then so we juice for each other. Well, I juice for her. Um, she drops off the vegetables and then like I'll juice and then I'll bring it to her place. But she's the sweetest. She's like, oh, she's like, I was just thinking about you. And then I bump into you. I was like, great, I'm here. Do you shop at Air One? I just, I'm. I love Air One, but she goes to the farmer's market. I go to Whole Foods, Air One. I go to all of them, but she went to the farmer's market today and she got like this like beautiful produce. So I'm going to, she got fennel, celery. So going back to dishes, I love a really good green juice. I've been loving uh, juicing fennel. Ginger. I love fennel juice. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And like yeah. bell peppers. Oh, bell peppers and juice is so refreshing. Mm. Um, yeah. Bell pe- like yellow bell peppers, fennel, green apples, ginger, and like some sort of greens or dandelion. Like that's like, 
feel that and use it and be like, Charles, yes, right. I love that. Yeah, I love that. that. And then the thing I've been doing, I think I you, you might have saw, but like I've been saving the juice pulp for either our community garden or we'll make it into like meatballs or like some sort of like you can make crackers out of it. You can do so many different things. Nice, nice. Yeah, I love using my dehydrator for that. When it comes to caffeine, your take on caffeine, I ask everyone this. I am strictly no coffee on, uh, you know, guayasa or gynostema. Guayasa has caffeine, but gynostema, of course, doesn't. I got hooked on the uh, Air One uh, gynostema tonic that I think Truth Calkins created. And I lived in San Diego and would, like, send people to get it. That's all. Is it called... Um... What is the tonic called? They, they have a tonic that I'm obsessed with. It's in a base of gyno <laughs> tonic or something. It might be called like super tonic or like super, but it's a gynosema um, base and has like all these really, really amazing herbs in it. Really good. I tell, them do, I tell them to do a little bit of coconut milk to make uh -huh. it creamy, just a little bit because the gynosema yeah. is. I think it's a water base. And then when you add like a little bit of coconut milk, it makes it okay. creamy. Yeah. I make my own now that I live nowhere near any really good, like anything. I have to do everything myself. I do have a girl that makes my juice for me now, but, and, and which is crazy because I, I juice for 26 years, but I want to know, do you ever drink coffee? I don't do coffee. I do coffee enemas. <laughs> I do coffee enemas. I'm obsessed. Like people, I'm sorry. Viral video on coffee enemas right here on my Instagram. I love coffee enemas. It's yes. I going back to detoxification, something that I come back to over and over again is detox your colon, uh, detox your liver. And a lot of people don't talk about it because the amount of glutathione that is released naturally when you do coffee enemas. And that's like one of the most powerful antioxidants in our body. So a lot of people like, you know, people look at us and they're like, oh my gosh, how do you look so young? I was like, coffee enemas, sweat every day and then prayer and do your green juice. Do you do them every day or three times a week or sorry? It, it, no, no, no. It depends on it. No, no. It depends on, I intuitively listen to my body. There's times when I'm like, okay, I need more, but probably like, once or twice a week is good. And mm -hmm. I will feel it in my body because I'm doing yoga and I can feel like, okay, I feel like I need to detox and do this. I'll do that. But colonic at least like once or twice a month uh -huh. uh, paired yeah. with coffee enemas and then doing like parasite tinctures or whatever you need to like move the stuff out. I just went to this beautiful spa in, it's like, Joshua Tree Hot Hot Springs. Um, it's called We Care Spa. And they do just juice. Love we care. Yeah. I love, I love We Care. Yeah. Um, I want to do a retreat there, actually. I used to run the so there's a place called the Spring Resort and Spa up the street. It's like they're in competition. Maria owns it. So when I first moved to San Diego from Ohio. For a year and a half, I ran the retreats at the spring and their biggest competition is We Care. So I remember when I quit working for the spring, I headed over to We Care just to learn and I stayed there for a week. It's a mother and daughter that own it. And yeah, yeah I loved it. That's where I got on like herbal face food and, and they had such cool like people come in and where I learned about the Vibra trim. God, I was, I was so, I was in my twenties at that time, but yeah, yeah that's it's the best. Awesome. But other than that, you asked about coffee. So no coffee. I only do coffee enemas, but I do love guayusa. Like I do Gasa. like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's so good. Yerba mate. Um, Yum. I don't do, yeah, I don't do like regular caffeine, but that's like my weakness. That to be honest, like if you ask me, like if I had advice, I love and I'm I'm learning different things I can do. So I've been experimenting with ginseng, but natural sources of caffeine, because I feel like I have ADHD sometimes, I need something to like, mm -hmm. the caffeine helps me focus. And that's the only reason why I do it because I don't like when caffeine affects your sleep and I can't do too much because I'm very sensitive to it. But 
there's something about helps me with mental clarity and like focus. Yeah. Well, the, the caffeine, especially from coffee, takes away our empathy. And I used to never drink caffeine. Then I fell in love with the man that made me coffee every morning for six years. And empathy. Tell me more. It 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 well, it speeds us up. It 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 you know. When we do the coffee enema, it stimulates the portal vein to release all the bile from the liver. So it's a great natural high. But when we take it in uh, through the mouth orally, that type of caffeine, especially if you're not getting organic because it's the most heavily sprayed crop, of course, we're getting it organic. It takes away your empathy. It takes away your ability to feel because you're kind of high and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do that later. And I'll call my mom later and I'll do this later. And so I found as I was coming off coffee, this is a few years ago, I remember like feeling really sad and mm. thinking, why am I tapping into all my emotions now? Oh, because I'm not high. Um, on the flip side, microdosing can open up a whole nother uh, portal um, in a good and a bad way. I'm not a big fan of ayahuasca. I did it three times and it's just not for me. But I am a fan of microdosing. I feel like it can really help people that suffer from chronic depression and things like that. Have you experimented with microdosing? Yeah, I love microdosing. I always go through seasons. So like I don't get too like attached to it, but I was microdosing for a little bit. Um, definitely helped. And you have to make sure it's the microdose because sometimes some things are a little stronger and I'm like, oh, it's like you start feeling wavy. I'm like, I don't want to feel wavy. I just want to feel, but it did help me concentrate a lot. Um, done ayahuasca, same, not my cup of tea. Um, yeah. Love your mate. You mentioned your mate. I feel so good on your mate. It's like an elevation and you don't have the crash, which I really enjoy. And I like the sugar-free element. Um, but I'm a big tea drinker. So, yeah. We we love you, Charles. I just I just want to say we want to thank your mom energetically for giving birth to you and, and your dad, of course. We love you so much. I literally was like giddy like a schoolgirl before we came on. I'm like, I literally am like the queen cougar up here because I have the biggest crush on him. Like, I love this guy. I was telling my assistant, I was like, I love it. I uh, I'm so excited. I'm so glad we did this. I feel like it went by so quick. Yeah, you're you're just amazing. Is there anyone else you want? Is there anything else rather you want to tell our listeners who, you know, we're living in kind of awkward times right now? Is there anything you want to say to our listeners to really kind of help push them out of that? If they're feeling low, if they're like, hey, Charles, I can't pay my bills. I'm overweight. I'm out of shape. I just lost a loved one. Is there anything you want to share with them that could help them? I always say the breath is your connection to the divine. Breath work is free. You can find it. If you can find this podcast, you can YouTube breath work. And I think if you can learn how to regulate your nervous system and your breath, you can navigate the highs and lows of life easier. I think that's why I do yoga. That's why I swim. It's to tap into our breath. It's to take those deeper breaths and journal. Journaling is free too. It's like just you know, a pen and paper, write things out, maybe write five things you're grateful for and then get yourself out in nature. Sometimes you get so stuck in our heads and overthink and consume so much social media. Get back to basics. And yeah, gratitude is the biggest game changer. Your breath, do some sort of breath work. I like to do like Wim Hof has like short 11 minute, eight minute breath work meditations. And it helps you regulate. And also every exhale, I think of like you're breathing out stagnant energy. And it's almost like a daily purification. You don't want to keep holding on. The longer you hold on, hold on, like there's like this heaviness you have to find some sort of outlet to release, to let it go. So sometimes I'll just take a deep breath, hold at the top, and then just do like an open mouth. Like, <sighs> don't do that. People hold their breath. People are waiting. They're like trigger bombs. You're waiting for someone to piss you off, to like 
go off on people. So like if you self-regulate, take your power back, breathe, place a hand over your heart, over your belly, and just be like, hey, how am I feeling today? Take responsibility for how you feel, but then also how can I fully show up for yourself today? What does that look like? It looks very different every single day. So like I said, first thing is when I wake up in the morning is gratitude, but then I'll place my hand over my heart and my belly and I will just tune in to be like, hey, how are you doing today? How are we feeling? What do you need? How can I show up for you? So many, so many of the times like we're waiting for someone else to show up for us, but I always say, you know, we we show others how to show up for us. So if we don't, if we're not showing up for ourselves, how do you expect, like, you know, like you got to start treating yourself the way that you want to be treated. So like healing the inner child, but hey, you're feeling anxious today. Okay, I feel that. Okay, what can we do to move the energy around? What will bring joy? Can it be like go out outside of nature, go for a walk, maybe call a friend, maybe do something that's good for your body, like drink tea, make a juice, you know, little things. That's why I created the 8 process. It's all about daily micro habits for transformation. It's not about these huge goals, but like eight minutes, three times a day, eight minutes for your mind, your body. How can, and your we, spirit. Access that? How can we, where do we go to purchase or sign up or you can just go on my social media. We have like free inspiration. And if you're in the LA area and also New York, cause I'm going to be posting some pop-ups in New York soon. Um, yeah. Check us out for events. I think a biggest game changer is like having a sense of community, even if it's like this, having connection is so important in our day and age when everyone is feeling so disconnected and there's so much um, just contrast is like find the things that unite and bring us together. So calling a friend, if even if they're far away, like one of my best friends lives, you know, in Brazil, but like we call each other and we catch up and we just talk and we feel connected. If you don't have a direct social group, it's like find people online that you resonate with, like Andrea, me, whoever it is. So then you don't feel alone. Cause I think that's when you start getting in your head of like, oh, I feel alone. It's like, no, there are people out there, you know, but start by first taking care of your own vessel yourself and then finding your gift. Because I feel like we all have a purpose and a reason why we're here. And our gifts is like that special thing that we're here to share. And then when you can heal yourself, take care of your temple, then you can access that gift and then you can share it Then you can go about sharing. And that gives you purpose. It, it helps you wake up in the morning when you're feeling groggy. You're like, no, I have a purpose. Like I'm here to share. I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. Then you get outside of yourself because you realize like we're so much, it's so much bigger than ourselves and we're all connected in some sort of way. I'm sorry to interrupt, but like Charles said earlier, even if you're only sharing to three people, you know, when I was being targeted online this past year, the past two years, I was unmonetizable and my audience reach had dropped from like over 2 million to like, I think it was 11,000 at one point. And I still, every Tuesday, Tasty Tuesday, Wednesday's Wednesday Wisdom, I still, I created my Oracle deck. I still put myself out there because I just remember thinking, okay, even Jesus was targeted. Just get out there, like whatever. Yeah. You know? And I want to, I want to say to you, Charles, you really helped me the last two years. I don't want to get all emotional or anything, but I think it was on one of my Facebook pages. I follow one of uh, your Facebook page, and you would put out a quote at the like literally. I was like, Charles is channeling me because he must have Scorpio on his chart because I. <laughs> like reading this at the, like where I wanted to give up and I was really, really down and out, exhausting finances on legal issues and exhausting my team on fixing problems and looking at my numbers drop because of all these reports. And I was like, this is so unfair. And why? Because I'm speaking the truth. And and that's when I found like solace in your work, like, and really started looking at you like as way more than a chef, but someone who really has a, a broader purpose. And we just interviewed right before you, um, Bob Proctor's son. You remember Bob Proctor from The Secret? Yeah. His son, Ryan Proctor, right before you. And his line of work is really what I see you um, extending to, like, just 
speaking nationally, motivating people, because if you can motivate me, I'm pretty like, I don't know, I'm pretty <laughs> set my ways and stuff. I was like, Charles, Charles shared something today that really got me. I am really grateful for you. Really. Like I can't express I it. Thank you. Thank you I so much. Know. I think it's all divine. And I'm so glad to share this journey with you. And thank you for those kind words. Yeah. I am just, yeah. I feel like in just surrendering, allowing to divine to work through me. It's like, okay, yeah, this feels right. But yeah, when I first started in food, I always knew like, this is not the end all. And now combining the yoga and food, and then now slowly heading into retreats and like maybe speaking. Yeah, I think. Well, I'm building a retreat center. I'm going to build one in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So you better come. I'm coming. Better what, do, you, do you know? Um, What's David Elliott? Why does that sound familiar? He's, I'm going to send you his stuff. He, I think, has a, a, a retreat place in New Mexico as well, but mm -hmm. he's a healer out of Ojai. I found him through my guides. Like I was meditating. I was like, who do you want me to do training with? And he came up, but I'm going to send you his stuff. His stuff is amazing. I think stuff, that's where my good lines are is Santa Fe. Like that's where all my blessing lines meet in the in right in downtown Santa Fe. I think and there's something there. I'm going to connect you with him. He does trainings all the time, but um yeah, he's amazing. He has a book called The Reluctant Healer and then like something about I think it's just healing. I'll send it both to you. You're amazing and we love you and we'll we'll talk to you soon and we'll send you all this stuff. I love yes, you. thank you. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. If you'd like to check out Andrea Cox's most recent fourth book, Eat Right for Your Zodiac, it's the first book to ever combine astrology with plant-based eating. Andrea's Akashic Record Readings, Holistic Wellness Coaching, and Intuitive Life Coaching Services are sought out by both celebrities and ordinary, everyday people like Andrea herself. If you'd like to connect with her, you can find her at andreacox.com, on YouTube at both Andrea Cox TV and The Detox Intuitive, on Facebook at Andrea Lee Cox, and on Instagram at Raw Chef Andrea.